Hi everyone, <clears throat> Sprite here with Condi Systems. I hope you have all had a fantastic week. <clears throat> we are um, almost, is it two weeks away from Christmas? <laughs> Whew, what a strange year it has been. I hope you guys can all hear me and see me well. Let me know if I have any issues because you know it's Friday and everything goes wrong on Friday for me um, so yeah let me know if you can hear me <clears throat> excuse me mm. so I have my sprite today in my stainless steel hugger my SSH 33s I have um, an affinity for the silver ones <coughs> excuse me and um, so yeah so I got my Sprite, and I got my stainless steel hugger, super excited, and I think that we may have gotten the tall skinny ones in, but they're not going to probably, they probably won't be on the website until Monday, so, but I think they're here, I think, I think, I think. So thank you, Eric, um, for letting me know that you can hear me. So... Um, so I, <laughs> we asked a question on Wednesday about your, um, about your questions and what you would like me to, um, answer. And I got a few good questions <clears throat> on the Facebook post, but I've already gotten some questions, um, uh, on YouTube and you guys are steady asking me questions. So let me first, you guys know the deal. Um, I'm not going to have a group name for my fan club, uh, because I don't have a fan club. Um, but, uh, you guys know the deal. If I get more people watching me, um, what I will do is give away these two really cool pieces of art that Mr. Zach made. I'm pretty sure he made all of them. Um, uh oh, what am I doing? There we go. So we've got the snowflake, uh, um, the Santa sweater pattern and the snowflake candy canes pattern, which I really, 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 really like this one. Um, so you guys share this video. Um, maybe you can make a fan club and you can share this video to the fan club. And if you watch till the end, perhaps you will get these beautiful patterns that Zach made. Okay. Oh. Um, and yes, sorry, Pam. I, I was a little late today announcing my live. I've been, um, it's just been super, super crazy around here. Cheryl! What's up, Scoob? Hi, TC. Hi, everybody. Very, very, very happy to be here. Happy to have made it through another week mostly unscathed, happy to have made it through Black Friday week. So, um, uh, oh, okay, so I've got some really good questions already. So I'm going to start with Paul's question about the Chromalux aluminum and uh, stacking them. Um, you can absolutely contact me off of this uh off of Facebook. Um, I would actually prefer that you do. I have a lot of people that send me um, instant messages via Facebook and I don't answer them because I would much rather you send me an email and that way I kind of have like a, um, uh, a record of our conversation. But you can definitely send me an email. The email is swood at condi.com and I will be happy to talk to you about stacking metal. It is probably my most favorite thing to do. But I feel like I say that about almost everything I do because I love what I do. Um, 
Maureen asks, do you carry printable vinyl that can be subbed on for dark fabric? Yes, ma'am, we do. We carry the Easy Subly vinyl, and we also carry the Subliflex 202 vinyl from Forever. And if you guys missed uh, mine and Christopher Sigmund's live on Wednesday, he went over all of the amazing materials that they have at Forever um, for sub to cotton, sublimation to cotton, and it is just so much. And we actually had a, a, a meeting this morning and talked about even more great products from Forever. So absolutely love those guys. Okay. Diana asks, <coughs> if you haven't used the printer for a while and you are replacing the inks, is there anything you need to do besides putting the ink in? Um, it depends on what type of printer you have, because if you have a sawgrass, it needs to stay on um, it, because it will run a maintenance cycle. Um, so if it, as long as it has stayed on, then you should be fine to just put the inks in. But if it has, um, if you have like a bigger MUTO that has, um, or like an Epson, you may actually have to flush the lines. But that is like going into a whole new kind of situation there about, um, you know, the heads getting clogged and the lines getting clogged. So it really is just recommended for you to keep your printer on. And I know that a lot of people say, well, if I keep my printer on, you know, it constantly uses ink and, you know, I waste money. And that is true. However, um, if you don't keep your printer on and, you know, you're going to end up having to replace way more than just ink. So it is always, always, always recommended that you keep your printer on and keep that maintenance cycle running. Okay, let me see what else I can get to. <coughs> I would like to know what alternate method is there to sublimate without buying a coated mug, say a mug from the Dollar Tree. So interestingly enough, I don't, so I don't have a way to sublimate it but we do have some hard, uh, we do have some hard transfer, I'm sorry, I'm, I need to stop <laughs> reading. Um, we do have some hard transfer paper that you can do on mugs and you can do it on wood and it basically sticks to like any kind of, of service, uh, surface, excuse me. Do you have a number for tech support? Been calling for days and it's always a busy signal. Um, you should never, ever, ever get a busy signal for tech support. Um, what, what happens when you call tech support is it's 1-800-826-6332 um, and then it's option two and you have to leave them a message and they will call you back. But um, as, and Maria just asked how late are they open? They are open they are available from 9 a.m. Central to 9 p.m. Central, seven days a week, um, and on um, and also on holidays and weekends and all that. Because we know that even though it might be Thanksgiving, you guys are still sublimating. Um, and you guys with the names, Sprite is Sprite's bubbles, uh, Spriteites. I don't. Know, that's just weird. <laughs> Um, uh, okay, yeah, yeah, Maria, just, uh, just, just, just call them, uh, and leave them a message or, okay, Kristen, thank you. So she's, so, um, if, if you're having that issue, uh, just send them an email, support at condi.com. It all kind of goes into the same messaging system and they will definitely, uh, <coughs> I feel like I have a tickle in my throat. They will definitely, definitely call you back. So support at condi.com. Oh, Eric Springfield asks, how do I avoid breaking a color light glass panel when it requires heavy pressure to sublimate? Well, I'll show you in just a minute. So we're going to do one of these. Um, <clears throat> I had a couple of, of other questions uh, about... Uh, you're welcome, Kristen. Uh, I had some, so some of the questions that were brought up on Facebook were really good. And um, Beth asked a really good question, which is how do I dispose of the waste collection unit? Hey, Jerry. Um, 
uh, and and basically you're just going to put it in a Ziploc bag and throw it in the garbage. Um, there's nothing we can do uh, like we can <clears throat> with our ink cartridges. Like if you, I don't know if you guys know this, but if you buy, uh, if you send us your used ink cartridges, we actually give you a, a, a credit on them, <clears throat> and that's the Sawgrass ink cartridges and a few other ones. So um, definitely. Uh, definitely check into that. But as far as the waste tank goes, you're just going to put it in a Ziploc and throw it away. Um, sublimation ink is non-toxic. It's in, it is environmentally friendly. So you shouldn't have any worries about like it being, um, you know, a hazard or anything like that. Uh, and then also, uh, Marishu asked how much ink does the waste unit collection take? And, <laughs> I, I'd asked David Gross specifically, and I wrote my answer down, and then, of course, I left it because I, I always, always, always forget something. And I want to say he told me that it should last, you know, it really depends on how much you print. But like we just talked about, you know, even if you're not printing, you're still cycling through ink because it, your, your printer has to run ink through those lines. So it will last you about a year or two, but if you print, you know, sometimes if you're in a really, really high volume situation, it, you know, it may not, um, oh, thank you, yes, hey, awesome. Look at that, somebody was watching me and paying attention, so hold on. I wrote it down. I wrote it down. Now, where did I write it down at? <laughs> oh. Where did I write it down? Where was... Well, darn it. <laughs> I guess I didn't write it down. Oh, well. Um, no, I know I wrote it down. Well, I lied. Apparently, I lied, and I wrote it on something else. Sorry. I don't know, guys. I'm not sure about that one. Um, <clears throat> uh, oh, so Margie says, oh, thanks, Margie. Margie says there's actually a bag that comes with the new um, waste tank. So that's fabulous. You can just um, just throw it away. Now I'm really upset because I know I wrote it down. Yeah, I don't know where I wrote it down at, and that just figures. I, I'm going to just keep looking through the same two pages like it'll show up. Oh, well. No big deal. I don't know. <laughs> I guess that's the answer. So... Sprite does not have all of the answers, and that's okay, but um, it should last you uh, about a year or two, but it really depends on the volume that you're doing. Um, and thank you, Eric. I appreciate that. Uh, Barbara asks um, about a new product. It's a neoprene sleeve that goes around iced coffees, but have... Um, what does that mean, Lindsay? You're, I don't, <laughs> uh, hey, hey, Chad, um, my husband, hey, babe, uh, so Sandra, I'm not quite, or Barbara, I'm sorry, if you could finish your, uh, finish your question, um, because I think I know which hugger you're talking about, but I'm not really sure, um, and Lindsay, you're hilarious, but I love you, okay. How close can sublimation get to Pantone color matching, uh, I mean, that's, it's, it's to a T, absolutely to a T. Um, you can, I have, there's actually a video that David and I did called, if I'm not mistaken, color matching. And we talk about how you can print out the, uh, the color charts onto your, um, onto your substrate. And then you can actually take, oh, I have one here. And you can actually take the PMS uh, book and and match it against it. So, and then what I like to do, and this is really good because you know your monitor is never going to match what you see. 
So I like to do it on the substrate that I'm going to print. So for instance, this is, um, uh, this is glass. <laughs> this is glass and um, oh, uh, this is glass and this is metal. So what I would do is on our website under the support documents, we have all of these color charts and you can print them out and then you'll take your Pantone book and you just kind of find the right color and then you'll use your eyedropper tool um, in either Corel or uh, Photoshop or whatever you use and that's how you do it. And I think Zach just linked the uh, video, um, uh, the video on um, YouTube. You can compost the waste ink Really? That's... Okay. I believe you. I'm not going to put it in my garden, but I believe you. Um, Chad is so friendly. If you guys ever come to Mobile and you come pick up from our warehouse, my husband is going probably going to be the one that's going to load you guys up. He is the redhead... Um, incredibly attractive man uh, with uh, tattoos all over him and he is absolutely amazing and Jerry I'm glad that you have noticed how amazing he is so where was I uh, scoop says there's a waste tank level on her computer for the Epson f570 the sawgrass may have the same and it does but the question was um, like how many sets of ink can you use uh, for one waste tank and it's really really hard to um, hard to estimate that okay so um, oh and then Cheryl asked uh, when printing through VPM what do you click on um, what type of substrate if do you click on if it is a rock slate and if you are using the Condi edition um, if you are using the Condi edition of SPM, then you actually use the slate. Um, well, thank you guys. Yes, I absolutely love my husband and, and we have been together for 12 years now and, uh, he's the best guy in absolutely in the world and he, he puts up with me. So, and I, yeah, Pamela, I did say it was non-toxic, but you know, if you've ever composted before, um, like I've really messed up my garden by like oversaturating with too much like uh, acidity or, you know, too much nitrogen. So if, um, you know, I don't know, I, I just, I, I don't know the, I would have to look up like the chemical makeup or like how it would affect the compost, like with the, the nitrogen or with the pH before I would do it. And that's only, that's the only reason I wouldn't compost it is because I love my plants and, and I have a tendency to kill them sometimes as my husband very well knows. He likes to buy me plants. Um, so Cheryl's, uh, so Cheryl, if you're doing rock slate, make sure you're on the Condi edition of SPM and click slate. And then her other question was, if you are doing the rubber or neoprene car coasters or can holders, would you set it for polyester or for mouse pad? I would do it for mouse pad. Um, polyester is going to be more like a fabric, I think. So, um, uh, TC, she says, you got to really love him to work together. And you know, it's funny because we don't really see each other, but we take, we have two breaks that we take together and then we always have lunch together. And then, yeah, we, uh, we do yoga together. We work together. We live together. I don't know how we haven't just killed each other yet. <laughs> oh, Barb. Mm. I, no, I completely forgot that I said I was going to do a throw. Um, uh, Bo, if you're watching, remember um, that we need to do a throw next week. What is the Condi edition of SPM? So there is actually a great YouTube video out on our channel that shows you how to switch your SPM to the Condi edition. And it's super easy. You just right click on the SPM uh, logo down at the bottom left, right corner of your screen. You go to options, you go to edition and I'm kind of unsure where you go from there, but 
it's all in the video, so check that out. Um, and I'm really sorry, Barb. We will definitely do a throw next week. They are super easy to do. Um, they're way, way easier than you think. You just may, need to make sure that you actually measure it. Um, so, Barb, uh, oh, okay, okay. So you want the you want the hugger that has the bottom in it. I got you. I think I've got one back here. It doesn't look very good, but I still have it. Let me see if I can grab this. Okay, so like this, I think. And I don't know what the part number is. <laughs> Martha, let me just tell you. Girl, do you know how much stuff is in my head? I mean, I remember part numbers and instructions. And, you know, sometimes I just forget things. There's so much going on. Um, so I think this is the one that you're talking about. I'm not quite sure what the item number is. Uh, Lens or Zach, if you can... Um, if you can uh, <laughs> drop the link in the comments. So Carrie asks, what the, what's the difference of the Condi edition of SPM and how is it different from her edition? And it just basically, it's more, it, it's more specific to our products. So, you know, if you are doing slate, it has a slate option. If you are doing, um, I think maybe there's a Luma Steel option for like our steel drinkware, and that's all. Did I miss a? Uh... Okay, so with the paper that I mentioned, the substrate doesn't need to be coated. Yeah, that's correct because it's not actually subsurface dyeing. It's just kind of like imagine like UV printing. Um, like UV printing, so it would actually have like a like a, almost like a hand because you would be able to feel the ink on top of the mug. <laughs> Thank you, Martha, for letting me slide. What model? <laughs> How did I know this question was going to come up? Which model of Hamilton Beach oven do you recommend for sublimation? I tell you what, the first person that can answer, I'll send you a uh, black box. <laughs> Anybody, anybody, what model of Hamilton Beach do I use? You get a black box. Who's the first one to comment? Nobody, nobody. Miriam, I know you know. <laughs> I know you know. Um, Sean said uh, that they watched. Yes, Miriam, got it. I'm going to send you a black box. <laughs> 31108. Uh, <laughs> Um, it's not fair that Lindsay, Lindsay answered um, the actual model number, which is, is not, uh, you, you don't get a black box, Lindsay. You work here. Um, yes, yeah, so Miriam, I will send you one. And um, uh, Tom, actually, you are correct as well. So Tom Titlow, I'll send you one too. So Miriam and Tom, send me an email, swood at condi.com. So this is the Hamilton Beach Extra large rotisserie oven, model number 31108, 31105, 3110. I, I don't know. I do know, but they have this exact oven in like all of the model numbers are 3110 something, and then, um, and then there's just slight differences, like it may be silver or. You know, so um, I would go to HamiltonBeach.com, uh, I think is what it is, and just look at their extra large rotisserie ovens, and all of them work. So, um, all right, so Tom, Titlow, and Miriam, I got y'all. So send me an email, Swood at Condi. Tell me you're the ones that won the black box. Somebody asked if the black boxes are still shipping. Um, girl, I don't know. I, I, I think they've all been shipped. If you have not received yours, send me an email, please. S-W-O-O-D at condi.com. All right, guys. How do I print a color chart for a Sawgrass 400? Um, check out that video uh, about... Uh-oh. Oh, why does Facebook always break?
Uh oh, I think I think I got it back up. Facebook, I don't know what's going on with you guys, but I think I fixed it. That was quick though. Um, so what is SPM? SPM is the color management. Uh, it's the driver for the Sawgrass. It's a Sawgrass print manager is what it is. Um, and Willie asked, how do I print a color chart for an, a Sawgrass 400? If you check out that video, basically all you do is you just import. We have the color charts as PDFs. You just import it into your graphics program and print it out. That's it. Okay. Now, okay, so I had a couple of questions that have to do with product, and so we're going to do some product. Um, <laughs> the first question is from Katherine Anderson. How do you stop the sublish shrink from adhering to your glass or cup, or better yet, why does it melt? Do I need to lower my temp or, my, or short, shorten my time? How do you figure it out? So the first thing, if you are going to, uh, if you are going to do mugs in an oven, you have to have an internal thermometer. Absolutely, there are no ifs, ands, or buts. You have to have an internal thermometer. We have a, like a six thousand dollar Hicks oven in the lab and it's this huge it's like the size of like an industrial washing machine and we have two internal thermometers in it because it does not matter how how expensive or how cheap your oven is this dial is not going to be the exact temperature that it is in here um, so uh, so definitely get this. I ordered this one off of Amazon. It's a Taylor candy thermometer. No, no, it's not. I don't think it's a candy thermometer, but it's a Taylor thermometer that goes up to 600 degrees. So got to, got to get one of these. Um, but I did want to do one of these because this is, I really, really, really like this mug. And I don't think we talk about this mug very much. This is our Tum Tin, and um, and it's ceramic, and it comes with a silicone lid, and it also comes with a little stopper on the bottom, so you're going to want to take the stopper out. So I have my first pattern, which is our Candy Cane Snowflakes, and it is curved to fit the template, even though it doesn't have any words in it. Let's go to um, right here so you guys can see. <clears throat> All right, so here we go. I got my pattern. Ooh, it's all, it's very blurry, isn't it? I don't like that. Anyways, I'm just going to wrap it around. And this cup does have like a lip on it. So I'm not going to be able to go all the way to the top, but I'm still going to get pretty, pretty darn close. Make sure it's all nice and tight. I always do my first piece of tape this way, and that's just to kind of like pull it and make sure everything's nice and tight, and then I'm going to tape all the way up and all the way down the seam. Oops. Okay, now I have a lot of people that ask me how do I get my seams so clean, and what I do is I'll just take my thumbnail, which by the way, please don't look at my nails today, they're awful. Of course I say that, and what do you do? You look at my nails. <laughs> but I'm just going to take it and kind of, you know, press the tape just to make sure that I've got a nice, you know, really compact seam there. Looking a little loose, uh, we should be okay. All right, so I've got my Subless Shrink. This is my SF79. So Cindy uh, is asking, how can the taped imprint be avoided on the sublimation tumbler? Um, you should not have a tape imprint on a tumbler. Um, 
If you're using this premium gold tape from us, it should not leave an imprint at all. Uh, Oh, that's funny. No, it's not actually a black box. It's just a box that says black box on it. Um, okay, so I'm going to turn this off and I'm going to use my heat gun. And I like to kind of have the, I like to hold it like this and I like to shrink all of this up first. did overlap the seam yes um so and i want you i don't know if you guys can see this camera's being real crappy today but i do have like some pieces here and right here that you know it's it doesn't look like it's super tight but we'll see it shouldn't cause an issue we'll see um okay so this one is because it's ceramic this is 400 degrees for um it says 11 minutes, but I'm going to check it after 10 and to just to make sure. And one of the, that, that's another great tip is one of the things about the supple shrink is, um, one of the things about the supple shrink is that once it has fully sublimated, you'll start to see the image kind of come through uh, the supple shrink. So let's set my timer for 10 minutes. And go ahead and start it. And I'm just going to put this on the rack. And I, I just put it upside down just because it, the other side was kind of, it doesn't matter which way you put it. I could have flipped it over, but I felt like it wasn't going to stand up right. Um, if you have this oven and you want to do a bigger thing, then I would, or what I do is I take that bottom rack out and I just make sure that the tumbler is spaced evenly between those heating elements, because if you get it too close to the heating element, it will definitely melt the sublish shrink. Okay. Um, Jennifer asked, do you rotate your items in the oven halfway through? And I don't, um, because I know that, uh, you know, I know that my convection oven um, will, is pushing air. So what the convection function does is it pushes air around which circulates the heat. Now, if you think you may have a cold spot in your oven, um, just go purchase one of these bad boys. They're like a hundred bucks and it's, I mean, you do five mugs and you've made your money back, so. Okay, how do we know the time, temp, and pressure for different paper when pressing on shirts? Hmm. Um, so we don't really have different times so for paper, Ariel, do you mean the, um, the sublimation to cotton paper or do you mean just like just sublimation paper? Because they're, like if you're using text print paper as opposed to SPP paper, then the instructions should be the exact same. But if you're using like the Forever Sublite, then those instructions are actually on that, that page. Well, oh, good question. Will that oven allow 20 ounce skinny tumblers to stand upright? Yep, sure does. I do it all the time. That is why I recommend this oven because this oven is $100 and I can do, let me find it. I can do this. This, this will fit in that oven and this is a 30 ounce and the 20 ounce definitely fits. That's how I do it. If you ever watch the videos, this is the oven that I use. So definitely you just have to take that bottom rack out so okay um what temp do you use for the 20 ounce skinny i use three i use 360 but every single oven is different okay um we i spoke uh earlier about the oven that we have in the um in the lab and 
you know, when we when I do a, a ceramic mug here, I'll do it for 13 minutes. When I do a ceramic mug in that Hicks oven, it only takes me five minutes. So every single oven is different. I would suggest um, to, uh, you know, get some test pieces and, and do some black, te black testing on it and just kind of dial your settings in. But for me, 360 degrees, six minutes on all the stainless steel. <sighs> Um, what's the best way to peel off the Made in Thailand stickers on the bottom of the handles of the Mug 11? We have to use solvent to get the adhesive off and it adds a lot of layer plus, plus washing off the solvent. Um, You know, I don't, I mean, I don't really know. I know that it has to be on there um, because as a, um, when you purchase from a company, it has to, it has to have the country of origin on it. Um, so if, if you were ever to like resell that mug on Amazon, I'm pretty sure that that would have to be on there. But um, if uh, isoprop or not isopropyl alcohol. What's the other al alcohol? Um, I, I, solvent's probably going to be your best bet, though. Uh, <laughs> uh, any chance the bottom of the 15-ounce mugs are treated for sublimation? They're not, and that's because they're, um, they are sprayed and they're not dipped. And then also, you're, it's going to be really difficult for you to get pressure on the bottom of the mug. So normally, um, so normally, uh, we use like a mate's material, denatured alcohol. <laughs> there you go, Miriam, with all the answers today, girl. Yes. Um, can we sublimate to dark cotton? Yes, you can use the Subla Dark, which has a glitter finish, Subla Dark glitter. Or you can use the Easy Subly, which is a cut and weed vinyl, or you can use the Subliflex 202, which is a cut and weed vinyl. Um, are, the color, are the color charts to import for the Epson F570? Yeah, so those color charts are PDFs. So you can, you can literally use that color chart on every single thing uh, every printer that you have and all you're doing is you're matching what's in your graphics software to your output and then getting the correct um, the correct uh, color output I don't know I, I keep I, I've got to stop reading comments you guys are, are zipping through um, yeah, so you used to offer a free Condi spreadsheet. Do you still have that? And where can we get it? You can just call your rep and they will send it to you. Um, okay. Yeah, so uh, TC says she has issues with the 15 ounce mug when trying to do a full bleed. Seems like those little ridges at the bottom cause the paper not to be even and I get the paper bunching. Any advice? I would shorten your template up um, because the bottom of the 15 ounce mug kind of tapers a little bit and I bet I don't have one. I know I don't have one. And so what you would need to do is just stop your, t your template right at that taper. I don't know the answer to that about the hoodies. I've not heard that yet, so um, uh, I don't. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, so Karen asks, "Is mug fifteen for or mug fifteen is four hundred degrees for fifteen minutes in a Hamilton Beach oven with a mug wrap? Is there is the time different with the subla shrink?" And yes, it is because the subless shrink is a lot thinner, and so it actually takes a few minutes of, of press time away because the, you know those wraps are silicone, so you have to kind of heat through the silicone. Color shade. <laughs> I, yes, thank you. Um, I, am, uh, I am doing a lot of things at one time here, so uh, trying to keep up. Okay, for my next trick, 
Um, I'm not going to do the glass yet. I'm actually going to do socks. So someone else on Facebook asked, um, what's, the socks, what's the secret to sublimating on socks? Boy, say that five times fast. What's the secret to sublimate on socks? Uh, my blacks never look black enough, and I follow the time, temp, and pressure settings. And what is the best jig to use? Okay, so I am going to assume that you are using the, uh, they're, I think they're like vapor apparel socks, and they're like S dash one something. And I'm, I like those socks, but as far as when you sublimate to them, um, they don't have as good of a result as these do. These are the Sublime socks. This is the Sock 46, which is the knee-high sock. Oh, no, 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 I'm sorry. This is the Sock 47, which is the knee-high sock. And this will, um, uh, this will well, you guys are going to see it's super, super, super easy to do these. Um, and you don't get a seam. They come with their own jig, which you can keep in and kind of use as a retail hanging. Or you can take them out and do whatever you want. So these come with their own jig. If your blacks are turning green, if your blacks are turning green, it probably means that you are under sublimating because when blacks turn green on a sawgrass it means you're under sublimating when blacks turn brown on a sawgrass it means you're over sublimating now if you are using an epson that may be different because we've had experiences where the epson kind of has like a blue tint to the black and so when you burn it it turns it green oh Okay, we're going to let it go for one more minute. I was like, what is that noise? See? All right. We'll let it go for one more minute because I do not see any designs coming through the sublish rink yet. Reds turn orange. That is definitely... Okay, so let me. Go, I'm going to give you guys an RGB formula that I use for reds. Write this down. Thank you so much. I, I, I like my hair too. Um... Red formula, R186, G16, B16. That is what we call Coca-Cola red. And that is, that is going to give you a nice, dark, rich red. Also, make sure that you are uh, designing in C, uh, I'm sorry, designing in RGB. Never design in CMYK. Yeah, Jerry, if your blacks are turning green in your sawgrass, and you may be undercooking it a little bit, uh, check out your transfer and see if you have any kind of, um, if you have any, like, light areas on your transfer. Hmm. What was this design? Oh, yeah, that's what it was. I still don't really see it. Let me see. No, okay. I think it. Uh, I think it might. Nah, we'll we'll see how it goes. All right. So always, 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 immediately remove your silver shrink because the longer you wait, the harder it's going to be to peel off. Actually, yeah, definitely always remove your silver shrink immediately. Caution, it is hot. And see, I, and I don't have fingernails today. I don't know what I've done to my fingernails. You would think I have some kind of like manual labor job or something. All right. Okay. I never have a problem taking the paper off. All right, here we go. Lord, Lord, that is hot, hot, hot. Check it out, though. It looks really cute. Whew. See? 
I'm going to let that cool for a second because it's a little too hot for me to pick up. But if I see that seam. Anyway, so we'll check that out in just a second. Looks really, really good. Really, really good. Um, have I ever had it stick and not be able to get it off? No. And normally, if your paper is sticking, um, it's probably been overcooked. Um, I, and I always use SPP paper, which is the Ditrans paper. Um, so I've had instances where the text print will stick on things, but I've also had instances where text print doesn't stick on things. So, um, you know, it's, it, it's kind of like you have to diagnose the issue. All right, let's do a sock. So I'm not going to pre-press this and I am going to lint roll it just because it's fabric and darn it. And I am going to use pro spray, but before I do that, so this is how I design for the socks because I am just going to make a sandwich and place my sock in the middle of it. So to do that, I'm just going to line my edges up. And fold it. I think I got, yeah, that looks pretty good. And then I'm going to take my Pro Spray. Margie, I saw that you had a question earlier that I missed, and I was going to answer it, but then I forgot what it was, and that was a while ago. So if you want to ask it again, I will endeavor to pay attention this time. Okay, yeah, so, um, yes, Pinky, so, uh, which, by the way, was my grandmother's name. Beautiful, love it. Um, so, not the paper, but the subla shrink. Yeah, so if that's, so that's why I did this mug today, because a lot of people have issues with the subla shrink melting. And most of the time, it is because you do not have an internal thermometer in your oven, and your oven is actually reading at a much higher temperature than you think it is. Never, ever, ever trust the dials on your oven. Always use these, and I might use two. Um, yeah, Elias, uh, if, if it is darker on one side, you can turn it halfway through. Um, okay. What do you think about that, the linen that they're, oh, um, so what was, I don't, what was in the black box that was linen? I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember. I'll stop calling me out on this. Um, so you do have one. Okay. Um, make sure that your, uh, make sure that your mug is not too close to the heating elements and also make sure that your convection fan is on. It may be that your, um, it may be that your design is, uh, not your design. It may be that your, um, your mug, the convection function isn't really working because if you don't have, so what convection does is convection pushes air around your, your oven. So it, it evenly heats everything. So if you don't have that on, what happens, or if you don't have a very strong convection fan, what happens is the, um, the heat just kind of collects by the heating elements and which can cause it to overheat in those particular areas which can cause some sticking. Oh, the zipper pouch. Yes, I love those and they're so easy to do and you can do them full bleed. I know I've got one somewhere. You can go all the way top to bottom on them. So cute. They're so easy to do. Such a good uh, high return on them. Okay, so let's do my sock. Um, length times width of sock template. Dang it! Hold on. Oh, let me let me get my get my ruler out. All right. So I'm gonna press this at 370 degrees for 60 seconds. And the reason I'm doing it at a low temperature is because at a high temperature the elastic will tend to break down. And so we're just gonna do. Actually, I think it's 50 seconds. 50 seconds with like a medium pressure. 
Ta-da! And we let it press. Um, yeah, yeah, so Kevin asked what machine is good for masks and name badges. He says, I have a SG400 with Sublajet ink. Would that be okay? Absolutely. That would, I mean, that's preferable. No, I wouldn't say preferable. I guess, I guess it depends on, you know, what, which printer you like. But, um, yeah, absolutely. You can do masks and name badges all day long on that SG400. You can't, you don't have the cover. Mm. I think you can, Barb. I think you can actually order the um, the the silicone covers for them. Um, but if you didn't receive it with it, I'm, you may can uh, call your rep. Okay, so super easy. So we've got one side sublimated. Now all I'm going to do is take it and flip it over, and then we're going to sublimate the second side. Same settings. I'm going to turn this bad boy off because it is hot. Oh, that's another reason that I really like this oven as compared to some of the other ones is because this oven has a stay on function and what really, 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 really bothers me is when every 60 minutes your oven shuts off, especially if you're doing like production, then you, so that's probably my favorite part about this oven is that it has a stay on function where it just stays on. Yes, TC, we have. Look for that soon. Um, <laughs> you have a Hamilton Beach extra large? Um, hmm. Uh, that's, uh, hmm. I'm getting to you, Paula, I promise. Uh, you know I get distracted. I, oh, okay. Oh, hmm. I didn't. I don't think I used enough pressure. This actually does not look very good, and uh, now I'm now I'm upset. So this side looks really good. This side does not. So we're gonna do another one. No big deal. All right. But first, oh, I didn't mean to throw it in the garbage. First. So this template is eight and a half inches wide by. 19 inches tall. Eight and a half wide by 19 tall. Okay, let's try it again. I don't know what I did. I don't know what I did wrong. I think I didn't use enough pressure. Well, let's, let's, let's investigate. So, yeah, I definitely did not use enough pressure or enough time, as you can see by all of the ink left on the transfer. So let's do it again. Let's do it again. Let's try it again. I wasn't going to do both socks, but since I messed one up, looks like I'm going to have some new socks for Christmas. Okay. All right, we're going to try it again. So some pro spray in the middle. <laughs> Your tech told me that hot air can be, yeah. Oh. Margie, I have never, ever heard that before, but that makes sense. That makes sense. Okay, so let's try it again, please one more time with a little bit more pressure guys remember i always say kind of error on the side of um air on the side of too much pressure than too little pressure and here i am doing not what i say um but what i tell you guys to do all right so i'm going to give it a little bit more pressure I'm going to double check and make sure it is 370 degrees for 50 seconds with medium pressure. All right, let's go a little heavier on the pressure. I mean, that's, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> well, I haven't gotten my stocking yet, Christopher, so I just got to see it today, but it was very cute. Um, and honestly, I'll probably give these to my husband. So, 
I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if he'll wear these. Yeah, I definitely did not use enough pressure because look at the edges. So the one thing about these socks is you don't get an edge on them. So hopefully increasing this pressure will um, take that out. Okay. Uh, Miriam, what are you what are you talking about with the pressing pillow? What are you guys talking about? You know, you know I'm nosy. All right. Hopefully, let's just cross our fingers. Ouch. Okay, so after this, we're going to do a piece of glass, and I think that was all of my questions. Um, yeah, so Carrie says she can only adjust her, her oven by 25 degrees at a time, and it has an auto shut off, and I, I just I don't like that at all. Mm -mm. Mm. Oh, the masks. So, the, the, mm -mm. the, uh, the, that should not have changed, Miriam, not at all. Um, so, let me know about that because I have not seen an issue. Are you having an issue with, like, the edges or are you having an issue with the ear straps? Well, you know what? We might have to revisit the socks because, um, <clears throat> hmm. Okay. Yeah, there's a definite difference. Let me see if you guys can, let me show you this. There is definitely a difference from one side to the other. And I know, I actually know what it is. Um, can you guys see that a little bit? Like, see how much lighter this one is than this one? And wait, there we go. So this one's much darker than this one. And I think, well, I know it's because I did not let them cool in between pressings. And that's how I've always said to do them. But I need to look at these again. So we will revisit. Yes, now I have a matching pair. Absolutely right. OK, for my final trick. We're gonna do um, we're gonna do glass. Let's see how warm this is. It's not too bad. So let me sh actually let me show you guys this real quick. It's not too very hot, but look how good. Isn't that cute? And then you would just put the stopper back in there and. Put the top on, and there you go. What a super cute mug! I love it. For and this actually reminds me of like um, like drinking cocoa. So I might I might take this home. I don't know. I have enough cups actually. So <clears throat> okay, glass, yay glass. Uh, <laughs> The moment you have all been waiting for. First thing is I'm going to reset my press to 400 degrees. Also, guys, um, just like your oven, your heat press needs to be calibrated sometimes. Um, so, you know, if I do, like, especially I've done pieces of glass before, like, and especially this big piece where... I'll do it and I'll consistently have fading in one side and then what I'll have to do is go get my um, digital pyrometer and actually check. So when I, when, I, when, I, when I check my press, what I do is I check all four corners and then I check the middle and you should not have too much of a temperature variance between all of it. But 
Sometimes you do, and if that happens, then there's, um, I don't know how to tell you to do it, but because normally I have to watch the video, but you can set it. So let's say like my, 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 all my temp is reading like 420 degrees, but my readout says 400, I can actually go in and change my readout to match what the actual temperature is because these things are, you know, even as great as this heat press is, as great as these ovens are, you still need to check. And especially when you first buy a heat press, always, always calibrate it. Always calibrate it. A digital pyrometer is a, is a piece of equipment. I think, do I have one? Ooh, I do. I can't believe it. Okay, so this is a digital pyrometer. And... Um, because a lot of people, they'll use like the laser thermometers and those are absolutely not accurate. So this has, <laughs> so this has a little dealy bob on it and this little dealy bob, <laughs> it's a technical term by the way, this little dealy bob right here um, reads the temperature and then you can turn it on and uh, you can turn it to Fahrenheit. And it is now 74 degrees in this room. Wait, 73, 72. It's getting colder by the second. All right, where do we get that? You can get that from condi.com. We sell these. Isn't that awesome? We sell these. <laughs> I told you, Dealey Bob. It's a, it's a very technical, it's like a scientific term. You only learn that in college. Okay. All right. So I have this image. And one of the things that I do when I print on glass is I, I really like to oversaturate my... Um, Uh-oh. I'm caught up. I'm surprised you guys haven't complained about this because that's got to be um, making a lot of noise. Oh, well. My husband bought me this for Christmas beautiful but we're just gonna hide it now anyways okay so I always like to oversaturate my images because I feel like you do get a little bit of fading um, on the color light I also do that on the um, I also do that on the slate because I feel like uh, slate you know when you oversaturate it, it makes it look better. I would not oversaturate so much on Chromalux just because Chromalux is such a true color. All right. This tumbler is Tum 210. Tum 210. Super cute. Okay. So I've got my image. I've got a lot of saturation in it. The first thing I want to do is hover it under my open heat press just to get some of the excess moisture out. Um, ooh, uh, so we do have a video on how to calibrate your press, but it's not, it's not going to work with like the, um, you know, like the, the, the other presses. It's only for the George Knight presses. All right, Diana, bet. Send me an email. I got you, girl. How do you oversaturate? I do it in my, um, I do it in my graphics program. So uh, if I am, um, if I am, uh, if I'm in Corel, um, I will go to effects and then I think it's like brightness and saturation and I'll just up the saturation. If I'm in Photoshop, mm, I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, so... Can we please see one of the socks without the seam? <laughs> yeah, I know I have them because I do socks all the time and I really like to do socks, but for some reason I just decided I was going to mess socks up today. Um, but I don't, I don't, I don't know. I, I, yeah. I will endeavor to, next week I will re, we will revisit the socks. Next week we're going to do socks and we're going to do throws. That's it. Okay. Um, all right. So, 
we've oversaturated it. We've um, heated it to kind of get some of the moisture out. And now we are going to tape it to our glass. And uh, Mark said he thought we were out of the color light and we are out of some things like ornaments, but the glass panels we have. And not only do we have them, they are currently on sale. Um, oh, okay, yeah. So Chris asked if I can show one of the socks that I just did and do they have a seam? And these do, and this is, this is completely because of user error, straight up. Like I did not do these right. And you guys, if you watch me, you've seen me do socks. I never ever have an issue with socks. And my favorite thing to do is take the socks off of the jig and show that there is no seam. But for some reason, I um, am I getting angry faces? Oh, don't be mad at me guys. But for some reason, I really messed this up and it does not look like it's Oh, I'm glad that didn't have anything in it. It does not look like it's supposed to. So, and I think I just didn't use enough pressure, but you guys see it does have a seam and normally it doesn't. So that was totally me. We're gonna, we're gonna revisit this next week. Am I getting angry faces? You guys don't, don't angry face me, please. I have feelings too. Yeah, oh, we did have socks inside the black box. That's right. If you get the black box, you get socks. Girl, you need a marketing position. <laughs> um, what do you mean, Kathy? Let me, uh, let, I don't know what you, oh, well, you know, you know you've hit it big when you actually have trolls. Okay, so let me kind of show you guys what I'm doing. So anytime I have a product that has a little bit of depth or like I don't have a lot of room to tape, what I like to do is just kind of wrap it and tape it. Um, when I change the color, when I saturate a, a, an image, I do it in my graphics program. I do not do it in the printer. Okay. All right. So we've got it taped down. We've got our heat press set. Now I'm going to press this for three and a half minutes. So this is quite a long press. Ooh, wrong camera. Oh yeah. Um, when do I show Oki products? So Doug is our Oki guy and Doug does his t-shirt transfer paper power half hour, which runs um, every so often on a Tuesday. Um, and he has all of the, all of the Oki answers. Um, the link on Condi Design goes to an unavailable domain. Oh, that's because um, that's because you have to do it on our Etsy shop now. Uh, we have so we don't have CondiDesign.com anymore. Um, we have everything on Etsy under Condi Systems Incorporated. I think. Yes, Condi Systems. No, I, I I am. That is correct. Okay, so we're going to use a new piece of paper, guys. Notice I got a new roll. I know you guys were all. Like freaked out. I was freaked out that I was going to run out. Okay. Now, um, Eric, is it, was it Eric? Um, let me make sure I have your name right. Yes, Eric. Do, when you do this, do you break the glass? Because I used to take the glass and actually, um, I used to actually, uh, we would throw it on the floor and, and it would not break. So that's why um, we recommend heavy, heavy pressure. So I've got my image face down. Also remember, you do not mirror because we're transferring through the glass. So I've got, really? Okay, so I've got my image face down. I'm gonna cover it with a piece of poly poplin fabric. Eric, what kind of uh, heat press do you have? All right, so I'm covering it with a piece of poly poplin fabric. And the reason that I'm doing this is because moisture is our mortal enemy. And the poly poplin fabric has an open weave that will allow moisture to escape. And we are here in uh, lower Alabama. And so it is very, 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 very humid here. 
um, and uh, in the open weave will allow the moisture to escape, whereas the butcher paper has more of a uh, finer uh, mesh area, and so it's, it's harder for the moisture to escape. Okay. So that's the amount of pressure that I used. Um, to me, that was enough pressure for the glass. Um, and we'll see how it turns out. I was like, fingers crossed. I don't know. I feel like I've messed up a lot today. Um, well, I messed up both pairs of socks, but, you know, I'm still going to wear them. So, yeah, no, I mean, the, the fabric, whether or not you have the fabric shouldn't, really shouldn't make a difference. Um, if you, are you continuously breaking it? Uh, like every single time you try? Yes. Um, no, I do not use Nomex with this. Um, <laughs> I do not use Nomex with this. And yes, we used to throw these on the ground. Uh, I mean, so the first time I did it, it was an accident. Um, but then it became like a joke because they are tempered and they don't break very easy. Um, uh, my, I, so I don't use a digital, I don't use the digital uh, readout. I just go by feel. And to me, heavy pressure is where I have to kind of like put some pressure on it. But if you're, so if you're worried about, if you're worried about breaking them, what I would, what I would do is I would, I would back up on your pressure and up your time. So, um, uh, Um, so yeah, if, if, if you're worried about breaking another piece, just come up a little bit on your pressure and press it for a little amount of time. And yeah, we, I, we use, you reuse the poly poplin forever. Can the DK20s be set up to swing to the left instead of the right? That's, I, I, I don't, I, that's a, I don't know. I have no idea. <laughs> oh, Miriam, girl. Miriam, I'm telling you, you deserve that black box today. Miriam says yes, because her swings to the left. Her husband switched it for her. Girl, you need a job. <laughs> okay. Um, mm. Yeah, I don't, I've never, I've never, ever, ever, pro so when, when I first started doing sublimation, I don't know, I just never learned the pressure guide. I've always done it by feel. And actually, when I first started in like the t-shirt industry, we just had a clamshell and I just learned by feel. Um, I'm sorry that that's, it's very, very hard to break this glass. So you probably, um, yeah, you probably like really, really got on it. <laughs> if you're gonna break it, you better break it on purpose uh, or with purpose at least. Okay. Do you sell the pyrometer wand separately? Uh, I don't believe so. I think it all comes together. All right, guys. It has been an hour and 15 minutes. Holy, wow. Time flies when you're having fun. <laughs> there we go. Okay. So, one of the things about the color light glass is that you can actually see how it's transferred before you even remove the, uh, the paper because it's see-through. But, that's a, good, that's a good transfer there. Oh boy, it's hot. I don't know if you guys can see the steam coming off of it, but yeah. So there we go. That's it. Really easy to do. Sorry for the tape. Where is it? Right there. I'm not, I'm not going to get it off because it's hot. Also, when you cool your color light glass, when you cool anything, 
anything always cool with the coating side face up because while the coating is hot, it is unstable. It is only until the coating has cooled that it really becomes hard and durable. All right. Eric, try it. No worries. Just come up a little bit on your pressure. And actually, you shouldn't even have to, you shouldn't even have to, uh, you shouldn't even have to increase your time. Just come up a little bit on your pressure. Okay, guys. I know. This color light has such a distinct smell. I, I knew as soon as I lifted that press, I was like, yep, did some color light. All right, guys. I am done for today with all of my things. But I have a lot of people watching me today. And I know what you guys want. But before we get to that, every single week, I ask you to leave me a review of something that you have done. And I randomly pick a winner and I give them $25 in Condi credit. And today's winner is Megan. Megan, uh, see? So Megan reviewed our sock 46, which is kind of the smaller version of this sock. And apparently she had more success with it than I did today. She says, these socks were so much fun. I love that they came with the jigs already. I may have a new obsession. Colors came out great and socks were a dream to work with. Girl, I'm gonna need you to come show me some tricks because I struggled today. I don't know what I did, but we're gonna figure it out. Thank you, Megan. You now have $25 in Kindy Cash. So guys, go tell me about the products that you're doing. Go to the product page, go down to the review tab, leave me a review, you could win 25 bucks. In addition to reviewing products, I want to see what you're doing. And we have a quarterly gallery contest that we have a uh, $400 first place winner, a three, $200 second place winner, a $100 third place winner, and then a $100 runner up winner. And it's themed and it runs for three months. And this this quarter's theme is show us your hottest selling product. So show us what's making you money. Go to our gallery page, upload it. You have a chance to win that money. But also every single week we pick a random winner and we give them $25 in Condi cash. And this week the winner is Deb Cowick of Wicked Artisan. She did our PFM 60s, which is our, our face mask, and she said, color your own mask. Wearing a face cover is fun, said no one ever. I actually kind of like it, but, uh, but we can at least try to make it fun. This gift set is perfect for making face covers, wearing a little, uh, for making face cover wearing a little less annoying. Nobody likes to wear them, but we need to be part of the solution, and every face color worn helps. Let your kids color the masks with washable markers, put it in the washer, and let the fun start all over again. How cute is that? You can also do it with the artist-free markers and do it permanently. So thank you very much, Deb. Um, you will be receiving an email on how to collect your $25 in Condi cash. Um, yeah, I can do some stuff with the F570. It may be after the first of the year, but, um, but definitely, yes, absolutely. Okay, guys. So it's about that time where I'm going to tell you guys goodbye. But first, I want to thank you all for watching me. And I'm going to thank you by sending you these two patterns. In order to get these two patterns, all you have to do is email me, S-W-O-O-D-S-Wood at Condi.com. And I will send these two patterns to you. I stop answering emails at 5.30, so you have about 45 minutes to email me. So guys, email me, s-w-o-o-d at condi.com, and Miriam and Tom, be sure to email me for your black box. That's all I have today. I will see you next Friday. Bye, guys.